and welcome to the Sheer Luck Show. I'm Charlotte Collins and joining me on the sofa today are Polly Sayer, Georgina Blasky and Heather Steele. Welcome ladies. Now Valentine's Day is tomorrow so we've got a show to get you in the mood. We're going to be sharing some of the relationship stats that may surprise you and revealing our weird and embarrassing celebrity crushes. You really won't want to miss that. Later we'll be talking you through exactly what to wear for date night from the perfect dress and jacket combo to the mini skirt look we love Plus, I'll be joined by former MasterChef contestant Lorna Robertson, who's going to prove cooking a romantic dinner doesn't require days worth of planning and hours in the kitchen. She's come up with an easy three course meal you can pick up on your way home tonight. So, loads to discuss. Let's jump straight in. Um, perhaps not the most romantic of topics to kick us off. To kick us off. Um, we're going to talk about lying in a relationship now. It turns out 56% of Brits think it's okay to lie in a relationship. Um, some of the top, I think white lies I is what we're so, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Um, so some of the top white lies uh, that came up uh, in a survey are liking your partner's family, liking your partner's friends, um, and watching a TV show without your partner. Um, do we think it's okay to lie in a relationship? I think generally no, isn't it? <laughs> it's like a general rule, but I think occasionally it warrants it. I'm certainly guilty of the old I've watched a bit more of Love Island, I'll pretend that I haven't, <laughs> that kind of thing. I think just, yeah, that's my kind of my limit, but generally, no. I was, watching, I was listening to a radio um, show the other day and they were getting people to call in who had broken up over somebody jumping ahead on a TV show they were binging it's together. Wild. And that so people called funny. in, it's a thing. Not marriages, <laughs> no, you know, yeah, but, yeah. but newest relationships. <laughs> would you do that? Would you pretend that you had not watched something when you had? I think when Game of Thrones was at its height, mm. I definitely watched a couple of episodes oh. and then oh. was poker faced, like, "Oh wow, that's happened!" You know, <laughs> the second time around. But yeah, I think that's, I think that's, you know, an acceptable yeah. level of. Lying. It's probably fine. Georgina, do you have a lie? Um, well, I like to. Well, I don't like to lie. That's what I mean. <laughs> I, I love lying. I, love, I, I think sometimes it's nice to have some freedom of movement, and we have an app in our household now called Life Three Hundred and Sixty because we've got kids, and we, we kind of they can know where we are, we know where they are. It's all very useful. And then the other day, I did get a little message on my phone going, "As you're in Sloane Square, could you just pop into Kiehl's and pick up <laughs> oh some shaving gosh, oil?" Wait, so this, I was like, "Sorry, this tracks you. This yeah. is just tracking me." Pretty and I hadn't realised it was on. I didn't know it was on. Ooh, this is a whole other conversation. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 had, I had said I was in Waitrose doing the weekend <laughs> shopping and obviously I was not in Waitrose. You were caught in Zara on the King's Road. Yeah. <laughs> so I think those days are coming to an end. And okay, no sad. secrets Turn in our family. No, no. <laughs> and there is, there is that kind of, who put the empty ice cream box back yes. in the freezer? Oh, that was like that. Yes. Yeah, that was yeah. A, another one on the list was eating something from the fridge. And pretending that, that you hadn't eaten it, I guess. Yeah. So, if there's only two of you living in the household, really though, it's got to be one or the other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does. Surely. Can I tell you what I lie about? I always pretend that I've like. I hate life admin and my husband always like is like he's very on it so he's like have you done this and I always just say yes I, always, I can't like you know have you whatever renewed the car insurance yeah uh-huh definitely yeah, I, do I, that. I need him off my back mm. about that kind of thing and I do it my own time, time. Yeah. as long as you do it yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah I'll the do the intentions there well, I'll do it at some point. It's fine. Um, pretending to go to work when you've booked a day off was another white lie on the list. That's I've so funny. I know, this is outrageous. I can't believe people actually do that. Would that's you do that? That's a whopper. I, I don't think whopper. that's a little white lie. So that's... someone would say, oh, you know, I'm going to work as usual, but actually they've just booked the day off and they're having yeah. a duvet day. I assume it's a duvet day and not like an affair. Yeah, like, like I guess these are white. Yeah, I guess it's that you want like a me day. Hmm. Would you do that? I mean, I feel like I could say to my husband, yeah. I'd quite fancy a day off, but it's going to be a, a bit of me time. I think he'd accept that. Why do you need to be like, it's like bunking off school, isn't yeah. it? Like, yeah. Maybe some people have teachers. really clingy partners. Georgina, Maybe. would you do that? Well, I just think it, it, you would want to reflect on the state of your relationship if you've got to lie about that. Like, I would want to spend my day off with him. Yeah, mm. I would as yeah. well. Yeah. Well, yeah. Maybe, maybe some people are not as smug and happy as me. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's move on and talking about changing your surname when you get married. It turns out only 1% of straight men want to take their partner's surname upon marriage. 1% seems very small, although that is, it, it, I'm not hugely surprised, it's, it's only quite, kind of quite recently an emerging trend. Mm. Polly, Georgina, you both took your husband's surnames when you got married, why did you do that? I think, well, I, I didn't feel particularly attached to my maiden name, and I guess, I know it sounds bad, but it is just a traditional thing, and I thought, sort of thought it was a given. I quite like the idea of us being like a family unit, mm. but then equally I think it's quite a complex issue, and if people do, like, don't want to take their partner's name then that is completely within the rights and I've got plenty of friends who haven't taken their mm -hmm. husband's name either so yeah or people doing. take their names um for their private life and then they keep their own name for yes. their 
professional work. life. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I I changed my name. I wasn't particularly attached to my maiden name either. I was quite happy to get rid of it. <laughs> and, um, and also, I think once you've got kids, it's quite nice with what you're saying about the family unit. Mm -hmm. It's actually quite useful when you're traveling. I've got mm -hmm. friends where they do have different surnames People for their say kids. This. Mm -hmm. And if they're without their husband, mm -hmm. They have to have other forms of ID. Yeah, yeah, they yeah, have really. to be able to um, go through some kind of interview process for certain countries oh they want to go and visit. And it's actually just real pain. Yeah. yeah. So I think for ease, it's almost just go with it all under one name. Mm. Yeah. Heather, if you got married, would you would you encourage your husband, your future husband, to take your surname? How attached to it do you feel? I feel attached to mine because I'm the last steal because my sister's oh, married she's and gone. changed her name, mm -hmm. and that's oh. it out of our particular oh. bloodline. Yeah. So I feel like. I would want to keep my name, but whether... Whether he would take it. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully have a modern man. I do, yeah, do you yeah. think any of your men... You know, if you had your time again, do you think any of your men would be so modern as to take your name? I don't think my husband would have taken my name, but he would accept if I didn't want to yeah. take his. I do know a couple of people who have like hyphenated That's both their names. Right. Well, this yeah. is really cool. I'm on a campaign for, yeah, people might have noticed that I didn't change my name when I got married last yeah. year. Um, because I'm slowly but surely, I have a bet with my, with my best friends that by the end of this year, I can get Ben, ben to have, to, yeah, we're gonna, no, not to fully ah. change my name, but to do that, to merge them. That's cool. Because it's a real trend, particularly in America, I think people are mm -hmm. starting to blend surnames. So either you're double barring, bar, 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 yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, um, yeah, or they're like literally blending. Yeah, like, oh, oh, so you take like a okay, syllable. So, so from I'm each. Collins, he's yeah. Horowitz, and I think we should be the Collowitzes. That's cool. Ooh, Comment below. Why not? <laughs> because I, like I honestly it. think maybe we'll get like an online thing going. I think it's cool, why isn't not? it? Yeah. It's very modern. Dawn Porter and Chris O'Dowd are Dawn O. Porter. Porter. Yeah. Chris, yeah. Oh, nice. I think yeah. Yeah. there are ways yeah. of blending. I, I quite like that because then both of you. Uh, giving something up and getting something new Exactly, it's very mutual. Yeah. I know, I think so too. Okay, Ben, if you're watching, it's going to happen. <laughs> um, okay, let's talk about Valentine's Day um, now. And uh, there was a survey issued about people's spending habits over Valentine's Day. It turns out us Londoners um, like to flash the most cash when it comes to Valentine's Day. We spend on average £130 per person on Valentine's Day if we're in a couple. This is like a lot of money to me. Seem That's like a lot, lot isn't mm. it? Yeah. Are, you, are you guys celebrating? Are you spending money, no, Georgina? I think, looking back a decade in the early days, I definitely went all out for Valentine's Day, and so did my husband. It would be kind of really? chocolates, cards, flowers, some nice underwear, oh, nice. something I nice for that. him. Yeah, yeah that is and nice. And for dinner, and we did the whole thing. Now, life's slightly changed, mm. and it's just card, chocolates. I would expect some flowers. Yes. Um, I think, that would be given. <laughs> but, but not 130 pounds um, worth of flowers. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'd be annoyed if he spent that. But <laughs> well, exactly, yeah. yeah but also, may, is it maybe just due to the cost of things in London? If you're going out to eat, it's that's expensive. So you buy a card, you buy this. It, it just adds up. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I was thinking about it. It's like, oh, that seems like a lot of money. But actually, if you're going out for a nice meal in mm. central London, which I'm doing tonight, it's probably going to come to somewhere mm -hmm. near that, is it? Yeah. yeah. So, sorry, you guys both mentioned that you're celebrating tonight. Is yes. that just to avoid the kind of V-Day chaos? It's a bit of both, actually. So my friends initially were like, let's do something on the, the actual Valentine's Day. And it's like, <laughs> you like, mm, I have a husband. I have a husband. <laughs> actually, no, yeah. I was like, yes, that was great. Okay. And then yeah. I was like, do you want to do anything? I was like, oh, I'm going out with I'm, girls. I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're doing something tonight and then nice. I've got the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's nice. Yeah. yeah. Like that. And Georgina, you're also going out tonight. Yeah, we're doing a um, meal and a movie tonight Lovely. because I, I do find the whole Valentine's restaurant thing a little bit cringy. Two, 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 two. Yeah, yes, it is. Menu. A lot of pairs. Done. Heather, uh, do you celebrate yeah. Valentine's Day? Not really. I haven't got anything against it. It's just mm -hmm. not really anything I've done. But I have got a sort of comedy box of chocolates that I'll be giving okay. to my other Aww. half just as a, a gesture. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so you wouldn't be spending £100? No, no, no. 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 What about you, Charlotte? What about me? Uh, well, Ben's birthday is on the day after uh, oh, Saturday, so we never really do anything and probably wouldn't either, but always a card. And yes, I, I look forward to receiving some flowers tomorrow. Nice. <laughs> um, uh, another stat said that 28% um, of Brits don't spend anything at all, which I think is a little sad because that means no card. Yeah. This is Brits in a relationship, I should add. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think it's nice to mark it, isn't it? Yeah, I think even if you're not super into it, it's just a nice excuse, isn't it, to do something nice for each other. And, yeah. yeah. You know, especially when you get to maybe a few years into your relationship yeah. and perhaps you're not always going out on dates. It's just a nice excuse, isn't Agreed. it? Agreed. It's a good reminder. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, well, husbands, boyfriends, etc. aside, uh, we thought we'd talk about slightly more weird crushes, celebrity crushes. I feel like this is like a topic that comes up over and over again. I know we talked last week on the show about, um, like, 
less weird, more legitimate crushes. Um, anyway, so we're gonna we're gonna see what we think of each other. Piers Morgan's uh, Piers Morgan has been voted Heat Magazine's weird celebrity crush for the second year in a row. That is weird. So can I just say that is weird? I yeah. don't like him, but I kind of get it. Mm, no, I just it? don't. No. I think he's a terrible human being. Yeah, he's a terrible. <laughs> no, I, I definitely agree no. with that. I do agree. With that. Um, so I want to know who. I actually don't even. I genuinely don't know who are your celebrity crushes, your weird ones. Polly, I'll start with you. Okay, so mine is Gordon Ramsay, which. Oh no. Really? I don't mm. think he's so bad. I kind of like, you know, he's a bit mean. <laughs> <laughs> he might put two slices of bread around my head and call me an idiot sandwich. <laughs> Love that. You're into that, are you? So sure. into that, yeah. I don't know, it's something about him that's just a little bit, I know what you bit mean, sexy. But... Maybe it's the guy that can cook, you know? Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Exactly. He'd be good for Valentine's Day. He, he would, would. yeah. Okay. Interesting. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay. Georgina, what about you? Um, it's Hugh Edwards. Oh, interesting! Yeah. So, what did you say, Heather? He's got great skin. Great skin. He yeah, has. I suppose so. Yeah, got yeah, he does. Yeah. Didn't he get really buff recently? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't know you're right. He did. He did. Yeah. He did. He did. So there was a time when you switched on the TV and Hugh Edwards looked a little bit like Eamon Holmes. Yeah, yeah I agree. Soft and squidgy. Mm. Not that is not the version of got Hugh Edwards. So that's like, you like hot new buff Hugh Edwards? Yeah. And then I went to this event and he was presenting some awards and he was wearing this burgundy velvet dinner jacket oh, so it's a very specific and it's a very short hair very specific moment got it, got it. about 14 months ago right I looked at him and I was just like oh my god who is that my husband said that's Hugh Edwards I was like I think sometimes kidding. people do look better in real life as well don't they so I'm just maybe saying that was it. next okay. time you switch on the news well, Take remember that, that red velvet heart. Okay, nice. um, Heather, what about you? My, I would have said Adam Driver about two years mm. ago, but I feel like everyone quite fancies him now. He's like an acceptable mm. exactly. weird crush, isn't Whereas he? Whereas he never mm. used to be in Girls. But now, um, Noel Fielding, for me, who I know isn't Ooh. everyone's cup of tea, but for mm. me, I've been a big fan for a long time. I like a man. Great humour. Yeah, so funny. funny. I agree. Long black hair, sort of mm. a bit of a goth. Well, a big goth, actually. I think appearance-wise, <laughs> I would take Russell Brand. Oh, over no. him. Well, yeah, I get, I get yeah. that, but no, it's always been Noel for Noel me. Fielding. Interesting. Yeah. Okay, mm. maybe he needs a Bake Off partner. He Could does. Be you. Oh, right. Uh, yes. Oh, thingy there. Oh no, that's yeah. a lie. No, yeah, no, I'm right. Sorry, yeah, you got are, you're Sandy Toxic. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's oh. leaving. Yeah, so maybe it could be me. It could be you. There you go. It's, it's your chance to move in. <laughs> um, okay, so mine is uh, Jeff Goldblum, which actually I just I'm, I really back it. I'm not actually yeah. even embarrassed by that. No, with you on that. No, yeah, hot. There. He had a bit of a renaissance after Jurassic Park 2, I think it was, like whenever oh, that was. The more like, recent. The more four, recent. Yeah. Four, four, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. More, I was too busy looking at him um, more recently. And he, when he did the press with that, which was yeah. last year, he was dressed amazingly. Yeah. There were a few Graham yeah. Norton appearances with some. Yes. Have you seen him play the piano? I was say yes. That. I mean, that yeah. is sex appeal. Him <laughs> playing the piano. I completely seriously. agree. And he's got, he's got real confidence, doesn't he? He's kind funny. Of, and he's, in Jurassic Park 1. Which yeah, not got his yeah, 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 exactly. But I quite like him as like a quite slightly kooky older guy now. Yeah, as well. yeah. I don't think that's weird at all. Thank you so oh, much. Thank you. I, I, think, I hope everybody feels quite validated by that conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Apart from you, Polly. Yeah. Gordon Ramsay, not sure that. <laughs> okay, well, thanks everyone. Do comment below as well with your with your uh, favourite weird crushes. I'd be interested to know. Um, all right, after the break, Polly and I will be back breaking down the coolest, most wearable date night looks from our favourite influencers, and we'll be showing you everything you need in your wardrobe to recreate them. Don't go away. Want to be part of the Sherlock's show? Send us a short 10 second video clip putting your fashion dilemmas to the team. Whether you've got a summer wedding on the horizon or you're in a workwear style rut, we'll answer your questions live on the show next Thursday. Simply record your video in portrait on your phone and send it to show at sherlocks.com by Tuesday the 18th of February. So, as we said, next week we are going to be doing a clinic live on the show. So, please do send us your videos. We can't wait to um, hear your dynamic way of asking us questions. So, please do send them in. Right. Well, whether it's dinner with your husband or a bar with a new partner, Valentine's night is date night. And you'll need something suitably date nighty to wear. Cool, grown up and a little bit sexy is the aesthetic you're after. And we've pulled together some of our favourite looks from across Instagram that nail that vibe. Yeah. Haven't we just? Yeah, I know. I feel like we've got some really good looks to show you. I think with date night, it's, you know, whether it is, as we said, a new relationship, an old relationship, mm. you know, there's this kind of 
a view that it should be super glam and over the top, but actually yeah, that's a bit cringe, isn't it? No, not at all. I think it should be a mix of like a little bit sexy, but just a hint of it and kind of yes. pair back so it doesn't look like you're trying too hard. That's, I think that's key, isn't yeah. it? It's getting that balance just right. Yeah. So um, the first person we're going to take a look at is Georgia Tordini, our forever oh, girl crush so inspiration. Um, she's in a mini skirt, which is probably quite a good way if you style it correctly to do that kind of sexy but yeah, relaxing. Yeah, yeah. I think mini skirts are fun. People shy away from them because they're quite obviously sexy, but I just love how she's paired about with a, a jump which makes you feel a bit more relaxed. Exactly. Great colour. Love the great colour. So, so good. And also, that's the thing. If you wear a mini skirt with, well, first of all, you need that oversizedness, mm. but also if you wear a colour, again, it kind of keeps it a bit more casual, doesn't yeah. it? So you get that balance. Yeah. All right, we've got uh, some examples to get the look, haven't we? So we've got a sweater. Very, by the way, very good dupe. I think this is a great dupe. I think it's only £35. Great. Which, uh, oh, they're just amazing. And I love that it's just an in between yeah. pinky purple shade. That. Um, and that's from Stories, isn't it? It is, it is. And then we've just got the little leather mini skirt from Zara, which I think, again, is a really great option to have in your order all the time but yeah I think leather with this kind of colour looks really good together I agree where would you wear this I think if you've got a bar kind of date definitely night definitely bar yeah. kind of vibe yeah I think that's just really yeah, good pretty cute um, and she's obviously styled it with boots as well yes, which, she has. Um, which again if you don't want to get too much leg out yeah a um, nice knee high boot would be really cool I agree it? yeah maybe with Something like, Something like that. Yes. Um, all right, let's have a look at a slip dress style now. Lucy oh. Williams, again. Um, I suppose we won't kind of dwell on this one for too long because everybody knows that a slip dress and a leather jacket is a great combo. But A, we thought we'd show you some good dupes. And mm. B, it, it really is a bit of a fail safe, isn't it? Yeah, completely. It's one of those ones where if you're not really sure what to wear, it suits most body shapes and it's just kind of understated sexy. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, Which really Lucy Williams that. is actually very good at, isn't she? So good at that. Uh, so yeah. let's have a look um, at yeah. how to get the look. Oops. Um, oh, gosh, Ooh, that's, that's a nice one. one. It is a nice one if I can get it off Just, the Despite the fact it's hooked up. <laughs> there we go. Oh, I love this poly. Right where this is from. So this is ASOS, which, again, like that just looks so much more expensive than it is. Mm -hmm. It's got a nice little kind of tie-up back as well, which I think is another little hint yeah. of sexiness. It's a great length. Got a little sort of side slit as well, so... That's a really nice, good option. With a biker. And then classic biker. I mean, any kind of biker, you've probably got that in That's your That's a nice one, though. This is my All oh, Saints one. Oh, is that your one? Yes, <laughs> my one. Model zone. Uh, okay. But yes, great one to get, I yeah, think. Yeah, that is a good one. Um, the other thing also, you know, we get a lot of, you know, a lot of people don't want to have their backs out, don't want to no. reveal too much, so just teaming it with a biker is a good way to wear Yeah, exactly. You don't want to get all your shoulders, yeah. all your arms out and stuff, and yeah, keep and that on. if you are doing some kind of multifaceted date night, yeah. Sexy for later. Exactly. Exactly. Put your jacket on. Yeah, um, are the strappy sandals to go with this look? Uh, no, they are actually or not, but you could. Oh, they're not. <laughs> oh, well. um, you get them <laughs> I think they, well, they, get, they get that Lucy vibe, don't yes, they? Yes, completely. Well. So I think, yeah, it's just a strappy, minimal, mid heel vibe. But I think we'll That's from Topshop. Yeah, they're from Topshop. Topshop are doing some really good, really good evening shoes. shoes right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. Okay, good. Um, next up, jeans and a nice top, yeah. which is the formula that we all know is a bit of a go to. <laughs> yes, it is. We've looked at Nina Sandbeck for this, who is in sequins. Mm. I love this look. I think she looks amazing yeah. but obviously you can tone that down a little bit if you don't want to go yeah. full, full sparkle I feel like yeah you could go for the sparkly version but it's all about picking you know a cool enough top maybe with a little puffed sleeve or something or just some kind of cool detail that dresses up the jeans a little bit more yeah so, I agree yeah. Speaking of, Speaking we have of, an example. Yes, we do. So we've got this lovely one from H&M. I love this. I love the pattern so much. Me too. And it's also, you can't quite tell here, but on the model, on the website, yeah. it gives you a really, really good shoulder definition, which makes it a bit more evening doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. So I just completely love a big sleep anyway. And yeah, I think that's a really Would good Would you see option. a peak of bra under that? Maybe, yeah, it's slightly yeah, sheer. So maybe you could wear like a nice little bralette under yeah. there and... Kind of another hint. Agreed, sexy, isn't it? And then just with a pair of jeans, just for classic pair of jeans. These are the Topshop straights, classic. We classic, these. we do, we, we do. do. Um, but yeah, I think this is a nice light wash. I think that keeps it nice and fresh and cool. And yeah, really good with that. Also, jeans and a nice top. You can always add interesting accessories to make it a bit more exciting, couldn't Completely, you? Yeah, some nice sparkly earrings or something. Yeah, I think cool. so. And you know, particularly if you're really not sure, that's mm. it's, it's a fail-safe formula. Yeah, it? exactly. Okay. Um, Time for blazer and skinnies, leather skinnies specifically. Ooh. Now, uh, Leia Svez. I don't know Leia Svez. Do you not? No, she's should I great. follow her? One of my favourites. Okay. Yeah, quite French girl cool. Yeah, she is French girl cool. Um, so she's in a black tux blazer. So mm. we're going to show you how to get the look. Yeah. Um, what is it about this look that you like? I love that she's kind of, it almost looks like a suit, but the leather trousers just keep it looking a little bit cooler, mm -hmm. a little bit edgier. And yeah, I just love this kind of tux detail here, particularly mm. on this one. I think yeah, that, that keeps it looking fresh and cool. I also love the shoes that she's chosen, the kind of sling back vibe. Yeah, really cool. I think that's really, really cool. So obviously, has to get a nice little dupe. Oh, these, these are amazing. Are amazing. So, so this so is cool. all Zara, but oh my God, look at those. These are Arquette, and I just love oh, sorry, this. Sorry, they're nice. Arquette. I thought they were Zara. So right, they're Zara. Arquette. Yeah, and the leather trousers we've got with them are also Zara. Cool. Oh, seeing, oh, there's so much to hold. And those are but, Arquette. Yeah. Arquette. Which I, I so never think amazing. of Arquette as super feminine, like a no. bow kind of place. So I was cool. so surprised to find these on there. And I was like, 
God, they are a great pair yeah. of shoes to have in your wardrobe. They're like low heel, comfortable, but you could wear them with so many different things and that's going to look so cool with this So look. cool. There was also a Zara pair like this just before Christmas, yes, which was sold out. Um, so how great that you can Yeah, I think definitely get your hands on these before they inevitably sell out. Yeah, I oh my think. God, they're amazing. Okay, yeah, cool. So cool. Um, and you could obviously add a cami to this look, couldn't you? Yeah, if you don't want to. A bit of lace, something a bit sexy. Yeah, exactly. But, or if you want to go out, you could just button up that blazer. Yeah, it's quite you cool could. Look. It's a grown up look as well, it's isn't it? It's quite grown up, yeah. And like sexy, but still covered up. Yes, I, mean. I agree. Um, okay, finally, a little time for a little dress. Yeah. Uh, we've got Jessie Bush in a kind of pretty printed pattern with some long boots. Mm. Um, sh let's have a look at this dupe quickly because I love, love this, this one. Of course, got a little belt on that. Oh yeah, nice. That's quite sort of Moront inspired. It's I very Moront. Yeah, sorry. I know we talk about getting the Isabel Moront look a yeah. lot, but it's it's so good. And this is Zara again. Yeah, so good. I think a nice way to dress up a dress like this mm -hmm. is with a cool Western belt. Yeah, I, I agree. Just adds a little bit of interest to the look. Again, it keeps it feeling a little bit edgy. Mm. Don't want to feel too dressed up and like you too made, made too much effort. So this, I think, adding that would be really really cool. Anything Westerny makes it feel a bit more casual, doesn't really? it? So if yeah. so, actually hers. Oh no, I was going to say hers are a Western boot. They're not, but mm. you could add a slight cowboy inspired yeah, boot, definitely. a Western belt, a leather jacket, yeah. and that really. And also, this isn't too smart. You know, I think mini dress sounds a little glam, doesn't it? But this mm. is a, a good way to get that look. Yeah, very much so. I love that. It's yeah. really cool. And then if you wanted to kind of extra layer, yes, pop this. I mean, it, it's actually a dress. I was going to say, I actually think you could wear these yeah. separately. But you know, if you want, I love the fact that it's long line. Just wear it unbuttoned. It just gives you a little fluid yeah. extra layer, and the white and the black look really cool, like monochrome vibes. Yeah. I think a blazer dress is a really good investment for date night because you can wear it with those leather skinnies yeah. or whip your legs out. Completely. A bit yeah. of everything. Um, cool. Thank you so yeah, much, no, Polly. Yeah. I'll give you this dress Thanks. back. All right. Well, obviously, we will link everything that we've mentioned in the show notes below. Um, coming up afterwards, I'm going to, from coming, ugh, from going out to staying in after the break, I'm going to be joined by 2017 MasterChef finalist Lorna Robertson. She's going to be sharing an easy to recreate quick Valentine's Day menu. You won't want to miss it. Hey guys, I'm Lisa and today I'm going to be talking through my five favourite products right now. So I'm going to start with some new Charlotte Tilbury. So if you know and love Charlotte Tilbury, you'll know that Pillow Talk is one of her most iconic collections and she's constantly revamping it, adding new products and she's just bought out this amazing instant eye palette. Now, I just think her eyeshadow palettes are really great in a way because they come in sections of three, so you know what to use together. I love these because there's a lot of neutral tones in there, but the undertones are really rich and there's a lot of brick and a lot of pink, a lot of rose and peach, and they're just gorgeous. You can't go wrong with this, and the packaging is so Hollywood glamour, isn't it? So that is my number one new Pillow Talk by Charlotte Tilbury Instant Eye Palette. Next up, it's a random one, but this is by Wildflower and it's the CBD Cool Stick. I'm training for a big swim at the moment, so I'm doing a, a lot more exercise than usual. And this helps with pain and aches. So you basically just roll it on anywhere that you're feeling an ache, you can just put it up like that. And I get a lot of aching in my hips and you feel the cooling instantly, kind of like a deep heat straight away. And then it helps to soothe the area, which is just amazing. It's a really great one to try. If like me, you get a few aches and pains, but don't want to use or take any tablets. Next, oh, it's the Chanel Balm Essential. Literally last week, they bought out Golden Light. So it's a bronze version. If you want this, get it quick because they sell out. It's crazy how quickly they go because this is the most beautiful product. I'm gonna put a little bit on my hands so that you guys can see. You get this bronzing effect to the skin, but you also get a glossy glow. So rather than using a highlighter that's a powder or that's got too much shimmer or glitter in it, this hasn't. It just gives you that glass, glossy skin effect. And it's one of those products that even if you're not wearing any other makeup, if you put a little bit of this on, you're just gonna look healthy instantly. Number four is this by Living Proof. It's the Perfect Hair Day Triple Detox Shampoo. I've been using it now for a few weeks and I am obsessed. So what it does is it removes build up from things like your styling products, from pollution, from any dirt that gets in your hair. I actually always wash my hair twice as well. Lots of hairdressers have told me that is what you should do. So the first one gets rid of the styling products and the second one just helps to really deep cleanse your hair. I have found since I've been using this that my hair is so much softer. It's so much shinier. I mentioned earlier that I swim a lot, so I do get dry hair, but not anymore. So that is why this is my number four. 
And last but by no means least, it's Dior's latest launch. It is their Skin Correct Concealer. So it's got a doe foot, which I love, which means that you've got this area here which holds the majority of the product, so you get a really even finish when you put it on. But the reason I love it so much, see how even that goes on? Is because not only does it conceal, but it colour corrects. So if you've got any redness or darkness under the eyes or anywhere on the face, you can just use this, blend it in, and because of the creamy formula and the colour corrective formula, it just knocks back any of that darkness or that redness or that pigmentation, whatever you feel you want to hide, and it doesn't crease underneath the eyes. It's an amazing, amazing formula, and I love that they've bought it in this jumbo size as well. And I think it comes in 28 shades, which is really great. So they are my top five favourite products right now. I hope you've enjoyed watching, and I'll see you soon. Twenty seventeen MasterChef finalist and one third of supper club and catering company Three Girls Cook, Lorna Robertson is well qualified to whip up even the most complex of dinners. However, she's here today to show us mere cooking mortals how to pull together a quick, easy, and romantic Valentine's Day meal. Welcome, Lorna. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have you here. I'm so excited to be here. It, this looks like quite a lot of ingredients. Yes. So talk us through what we're making and whether it's really that intimidating or not. It's definitely not intimidating. Okay. Very easy, very simple. Um, so we're doing a very, very quick, easy three courses that you can whip up um, as you get home tomorrow night mm -hmm. from supermarket ingredients. Dream. So we're doing a vegetarian, kind of Vietnamese-inspired summer roll. Delicious. With like a, a sweet and spicy, salty dipping sauce to go with mm -hmm. that. And then really, really quick, moule marinier with some crusty bread on the side, mm -hmm. um, some herbs through that, really, really tasty. And then we're doing a uh, quite delicious salted caramel and chocolate tart. Quite. With raspberries. Quite, yeah. okay, All yeah, right. yeah, yeah, sounds yeah. good to me. Um, so, so we'll start straight in with the summer cool. rolls. Um, yes. Those who have seen behind the scenes will know that uh, here at the Sheer Lux team, we're, we are pretty good at making Well versed a in a summer roll. Exactly. Um, so talk us through. These are, they're like rice paper wraps, they? are. They? They're like rice paper rolls. And are they easy to find? So, so easy to find. Um, any supermarket, to be honest, will have them. A nice big one. Okay. Um, if you have kind of a local... Chinese supermarket or something mm -hmm. like that, they'll definitely have them. But yeah, Waitrose stock them, cool. you should be fine. Yeah, I think I've seen them in Waitrose. Yeah. Okay, so what do you do? You put them in some warm water. Yeah, so we've just popped one into here mm -hmm. until it's kind of this consistency yeah. here. It's gone really soft and squishy, kind mm -hmm. of like the texture of pasta. You saw how quick that was. Literally that was very quick. like 15 seconds. Yes. Taking that out onto a board, and we just want to smooth out some of those creases. <laughs> yes, it's, see that. it's not that, that's, that's the hard bit, really. It gets sticky. It? Getting it nice and sticky. Yes. So, then we're going to move on to our filling. Okay. As I said, we've kept ours veggie. Mm -hmm. If you wanted to pop in some prawns or some kind of pork, some chicken, absolutely go for it. And you actually could put anything in these, really, couldn't you? A hundred percent. Anything that you've got kind of lurking mm -hmm. in the back of a fridge. Great. That veg <laughs> drawer. Stuff that he's using. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So if we... What can I pass you? Pass me that bowl that we've got here. Sure. So what's in here? A bit of a blue Peter moment. What's we've in here? Got... I say as if I can't see that there's carrots and cucumber in there. We have carrot, cucumber. What is this? Yeah. A bit of lettuce and a spring mm -hmm. onion. Okay, easy. Yep, I think those definitely. are fridge staples for me. Definitely, people. definitely. And then if you can just pop me some of those, um, the noodles yep. and some of the peanuts. Sure, so those are rice noodles. Yep. Again, you can buy them in packets anywhere, yep, can't you? Exactly. And, then and they're super quick to make as well in advance. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. then we've just chopped up some peanuts here. I've got some of these really delicious crispy onions that you sometimes get on sushi. I mean, these are my favourite things in the Same whole world. Same here. Absolutely delicious. It's like crack. Yeah, it really is. And then <laughs> we've got some, um, just some soft herbs sure. over there. So I've got some Thai basil some mint, some coriander. Again, you can kind of chuck in what you've got mm -hmm. in the fridge. So this is your edit, edit of these? Exactly. Got it. Okay, exactly. do we need the lime? Um, no, so that goes okay. into the dipping That's sauce, the sauce, which okay, we cool. will I'll put this back down then. So I'm just going to take our, um, our wrapper here, mm -hmm. and we're going to lay out some of these veggies. Really, really quick, really easy. Some carrot, cucumber, bit of lettuce goes in there. Mm -hmm bit of spring onion. And you want to play with your textures with this, presumably, you a do, bit of everything. Exactly. We've got some rice noodles in there to kind of, a bit of filling. Mm -hmm. You want a bit of carb, yeah, you know, it's a Friday night. Always. Mm -hmm. And then for crunch, we've got some of these really delicious um, salted chopped up peanuts. Do you, you don't need to roast them or anything before? No. Buy them roasted? No, 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 buy them roasted. Yeah, They've easy. done the work for you. Sure. So um, crispy yes, onions. The onions. Um, you could put peanut butter in these. A hundred percent. I love that suggestion. I know. Thanks. Thanks. And then we're just going to rip off the soft ends whack those in there, mm -hmm. and that's it. 
I mean, you can be as neat or as rustic mm -hmm. as possible. So you fold in each end, do you, to keep it fold all safe? Fold in each end. Mm -hmm. It's a bit like, you know, when you go to uh, get a burrito. Yes. And then, we've all been there. Yeah. <laughs> Wrap it up. Oh, it's a bit like swaddling a baby. <laughs> or swaddling <laughs> just, a baby. Or just like that, or buying a burrito, burrito or either a baby. way. <laughs> There we go. Delicious. And then you Pop just sit them on your... plate there. And also, you want them to be quite colourful, don't you? you That's do. where the carrot comes you in. You can see the carrot through there. You can see the green. Yeah. Um, Some radish, got... maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lovely. Really nice. Peppers. Nice crunch. Sure. And then the dipping sauce that we've got to go with it um, is a combination of... We've got some soy sauce, we've got some fish sauce, which are both kind of have that salty flavour. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've combined that with a teaspoon of sugar. Um, yep, caster sugar, mm -hmm. the juice of a lime, yep. and some bird's eye chilli. Which I won't touch or pick up, no. Um, but should we have a quick look at what not? Well, I like chilli, but just I then rub it in my eyes. Ah, uh, I, I see what so, you mean. And that is absolutely delicious. Yeah. Um, also, presumably, I mean, there's quite a lot of these in a pack, so you can kind of keep going. It's a pretty filling starter. Keep isn't going, it? keep going. And it looks really impressive, yeah. you know? It looks like you've really gone to town, it does. you've made the effort. Light dish, really nice. Agreed. Also, really inexpensive and good for veggies. Completely. Great. There Job done. Go. Thank you so much. Starter I will done. be taking these um, onions home with me. Okay, <laughs> let's have move Pop on. on Thank you. Let's move on to main course now. Yes. So we're doing creamy mussels. Is we the, are the English translation. Yes. Um, so we're. I think when it comes to seafood. People can be quite intimidated yes. by it. It's quite scary. Yeah. You've got the food poisoning worry. That's always what I'm scared of with yeah. seafood at home. It's one of those things that when you go out to a restaurant, mm. you're like, I'll have fish because I'm never going to cook it at home. Yeah. Mussels, honestly, super, super quick, mm -hmm. really easy, kind of the ultimate fast food. So what are your tips for, if you are scared, for getting it right? Where does one even get mussels from? So the ones that we have here mm -hmm. are from the supermarket. Okay. Really, really easy. Packet of mussels. These are still live. You can okay. get those ones that are backpacked that are already oh, yes, in the yeah, sauce. Yeah. These are different. These are completely plain. We're doing it from scratch. And you want fresh ones, easy. presumably, for this. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. So pick these up tonight, tomorrow. They'll be completely fine. Cool. I wouldn't maybe go any, Three any days. further okay, than that. Sure. But 24 exactly. hours is fine? Yeah. Okay. And the, all the hard work's been done for you. They're cleaned, they're prepped, they're mm -hmm. good to go. Um, if you've got any in here that um, when you tap them, they don't close, like you see this one here, you give them a squeeze. Yeah. It's still chatting away to you. Yeah. You don't want that. Okay. It's probably not great. That's Leave bad. that one out. Sure. And then once you've cooked them, mm -hmm. if you have any that stay closed, yeah. again, get rid. Sure. So you want them closed and then they cook and then they're open. Yeah, exactly. Got it. Okay. Um, other than that, you should be fine. Okay. Simple. So what's, what is this steaming so, away? So bubbling away in this pot mm. here, we have two shallots that we've chopped down nice and finely with mm -hmm. a big fat clove of garlic in there as well. Um, we've got a knob of butter. We've mm -hmm. got quite a large glass oh, yeah. of white wine. Oh, yes, we uh, do. Exactly. Here we My go. glamorous assistant. Yeah, yeah, you <laughs> this is the ingredients. Yeah. yeah. So we've got shallot garlic in there already, mm -hmm. some white wine, some butter. And now it's time. It's nice and hot. So sure. you want it kind of steaming, bubbling away. And what are the herbs, sorry, that have gone in? These go in... Uh, Later. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Cool. So let's put that there then. In these go. There's some water in there as well. Well, it's a good sound, isn't it? That we want to chuck in there. Sure. Is that that portion? Is that for two? Yeah, or I would say that would much. be for two. No, okay. not at all. And we're going to whack the lid on mm -hmm. and let that steam away. Okay. Is it a high temperature? Yeah. It's yeah. as high as you can get it to go, oh, right, basically. Okay. Um, the liquid in that was in there already mm -hmm. was nice and hot. Sure. So you want that steam to open up the, the muscles in okay. there. Okay, delicious. And you leave this for how long? Um, I would say a couple of minutes. Oh, and that, that, that would quick? do it. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So, so we've got a few minutes to kill. Oh no, you're going to cut some lemons. I was going to ask you about something else. Oh, you can ask away. <laughs> I was going to say, what are you up to now? So obviously MasterChef was a few years ago. It was. Um, well, I now work in restaurant PR, mm -hmm. Delicious. which is brilliant. Yeah, you basically just get to write about food all day. Absolute dream. Lots of eating, lots of drinking. Great. Um, really great agency, Source PR. Lovely. Again, we're all women. It's Love lovely. That. Just yeah. like that. Yeah. I'm rich. <laughs> Sorry, rich. Um, the token and man. The token man, exactly. Um, and what are you cooking a lot of at the moment? What are you loving right now? Oh, I mean anything quick and easy. To mm -hmm. be honest, on a weeknight, we're all you know struggling yeah. for time. Very, very busy at work. So, you know, a quick curry, um, a quick stir fry, yes. something like that. You gave me a good aubergine tip earlier. I did. Mm. I love, love an aubergine me curry. But, but I was saying it's quite hard to cook an aubergine once you've come home from work, isn't Exactly. It? And mm. it can be kind of spongy, mm, a bit tough, mm -hmm. a bit rubbery. Yep. You don't want that. Chop it all up, whack it in the microwave. Such a good tip. Not so just clever. for super noodles. Who knew? Um, <laughs> put it in there for 10 minutes or so, yeah. and it will come out, it will look a bit sad, I'm not going to lie. Yeah. However, get your kind of curry sauce on the go, some tomatoes, yeah. onions, and then put your aubergine in, and it gets that really nice kind of silky texture. And it goes gooey. It does. Oh my God, that is such a good tip. It Thank goes you. Okay. gooey. If you only take one thing away from this, <laughs> then take that. Take the Love that. Sorry, so you've chopped up, you've chopped up what here? Lemon and? Lemon and some parsley. Lovely. 
in there, we'll just give our mussels a bit of a mix around. Mm -hmm. They're looking I lovely. love that sound so much. It sounds like holidays, Yeah, it does, it? exactly. It sounds like the sea, which makes sense. Completely. With the seafood. We're going to chuck in our parsley. <laughs> yeah. Big squeeze of lemon. Mm, yeah. Really fresh. And then I'm actually going to pop in a little bit of double cream. Okay. Could you could you opt out for the double cream? Oh, God. I mean, it does look good, but you don't have to. You, you could opt out. Okay. Definitely. It's better. Everything's better with double cream, yeah. isn't it? If sure. you were, you know, going for health. Sure. Then completely that, fine. Because actually, without cream and butter... It's really it's, healthy. It's, it's, yeah, it's really healthy. So if, yeah. Seafood's super good for you. Exactly. You know, lots and lots of antioxidants in there. But it's Valentine's Day and we're indulging. And it looks kind of sexy as well, you know. It's sexy, I agree. It's a, it's a sexy dish. It is. Mm -hmm. So how much longer does that then need to simmer um, for? Maybe a minute or two. Okay, cool. And we're going to serve it with crusty bread? We are indeed. You a could, good bit of sourdough. Nice. And you could do it with chips? You could 100% do it with chips. Yeah. That would be delicious. That would also be a good suggestion. So, so good. So good. Cool. Right. I think we could be... Nearly there? Nearly there. Okay. Definitely. How are we looking? So you're literally just looking to see if they've all opened up to tell yeah, if they're done? absolutely. Okay. Some of them are there. I think maybe we oh, could do with a slightly hotter hob, okay. but it's fine. <laughs> we'll get there, we'll get there. Um, what it we also, could do in the meantime yeah. is maybe do a bit of the pudding and then we can dish this sure. up. Sure, okay. Um, it's a real shame that smell vision hasn't been invented yet because, oh my God, that smells so good. Um, go ahead. Fab, if you just pass me that tea towel. Yes. We'll give this board give a that a little flip. wipe down. Sure. So remind us what you're doing for, uh, that was a very dramatic flip. <laughs> what are you going to be doing for pudding? We're doing a very quick, very easy chocolate and salted caramel tart. Oh, delicious. Okay. Yum. So we're going to grab one of our pre-made tart cases. Love that. As I was saying before, Jamie Oliver always pre-buys his, yeah. his pastry, doesn't he? So I mean, if it's good enough for him. They're great. Why wouldn't you? No, you might exactly. as well do too while we're at it. Yes. And I'm going to start off by making a chocolate ganache, mm -hmm. which sounds very fancy. It does. It's cream and chocolate. Is that all it is? So you've warmed up the cream. Yeah, we've and got some hot cream there. Yeah. Um, and we've got some dark chocolate mm -hmm. in this bowl already. And you literally just combine the two together. Absolutely delicious. It saves you having to do the whole Bain Marie thing yes, where you can get grainy chocolate. It's quite stressful. Yeah. It's, it's not slow what you as want. well. It is very slow. And messy. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, nice. So easy. we're going to pop that there. And can I ask you, you presumably Let use the same down. cream? Across, like I love it when you can use, you don't have to buy lots of specific different ingredients. A double for product. Each, a double product, exactly. So you can, it, it, I like that the cream works for both. How are your stirring skills? I, like, I'll give it a go. Like, how bad can they be? Exactly. You give Sorry, I'm being a rubbish sous chef. I'll give this a stir. Uh, and what's next? The salted caramel. Oh, yes. You gave yourself the good job. Oh, look at that. We're going to be... Yeah, indulging. Absolutely delicious. I mean, maybe if you left the cream out of the mussels, then you could move on to this. Sure. That's true. Yeah. You could. Yeah, because actually, without dessert, incredibly healthy. And we'd be on to a winner. Some, we're going to put some raspberries on. That's health, we isn't are. it? One of your five a day. Exactly. And how much cream do you want to use? How thick should this be or, or um, runny? We just want that chocolate to be melted. Okay. In all honesty. And then we're good. I might have okay. a little wash up in there. Okay. <laughs> so multifunctional. Uh, how do we think the mussels are doing in the meantime? Yeah, I think those mussels are probably okay, let's, good. Let's give them a whirl then while I continue to melt Whip this chocolate. Those out into here. They're smelling oh, rather that nice. Smells incredible. Yeah, we are. Yeah, we're good. We've got some good mus muscle action on the um, go. And presumably, you want to savour every every last drop of that sauce as well. We absolutely okay. do. Good. And you just pour it straight in. Yeah. Okay. Avoiding hitting you. Yes, ideally. Oh God, these look delicious. They look good. If you oh, can you see need the that. cream. You're right. There we go. Yum. I'm actually going to yes. use some of these. Spoon it in. To that get some of these. Oh, yeah, look at that. Lovely mussels. Delicious. Onto the plate. Oh, they look so. Oh, that smell is absolutely incredible. It smells like Cornwall. It smells yes, like it does. holidays by the sea. Also, anything that involves bread with a main course is right up my street. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Pour in some of that liquid. Oh, delicious. I think that chocolate's kind of looking there it's, as well. It's getting there, it's getting there. This is a good one. Oh, look at that with the bread. That's absolutely gorgeous. Delish. Okay. Fab. Um, so, will that do? I think that'll do. Mm. Chocolate-wise, you could Yum. do with that kind of melting down fully. A little more, sure. If our cream was a bit hotter, yeah. it would have done the business. Sure. But you, you know what? It's fine. We'll make do. Yeah. Completely. So we're oh, going to spoon that. that. Mm -hmm. And once this is all melted down properly, That'll be rich and kind of shiny, mm -hmm. really gooey, 
just you know Amazing. lovely lovely deliciousness and presumably it doesn't i mean it doesn't really matter what consistency the chocolate is anyway because it's all going to taste the same and which is absolutely delicious absolutely Love. pop that oh i see so it's spread so actually the salted caramel becomes a bit of a nice surprise it's like it? a bottom layer love that absolutely oh i see we're just okay not not on top couple of, i think if it was set sure you could go on top but, but as like we're slightly that. runny love and a dollop of creme fraiche definitely a dollop yes. of creme fraiche just to cut through it a bit right exactly exactly oh. Absolutely delicious. Ta da! Ta da! Oh, Lorna, this all looks absolutely amazing. Happy Valentine's ha Day! Happy Valentine's oh, Day! Oh, what a so treat! Easy. So, you really can go home and pick up all of these bits, actually. 100%. Way, you? Really easy, really quick. Thank you so much. No I, um, problem. I thank hope... you for having me. No, thank you. And I'm really excited to tuck straight into this as soon as we finish. <laughs> um, if you uh, do follow Lorna at Lorna Robertson, uh, underscore and yeah thank you so much for being here thank today you. Uh, uh, we'll be back on Tuesday with our edit of the affordable home accessories we love plus a top makeup artist will be here showing you all her tips for making mature skin look flawless please also do send us your videos for, start, for our fashion clinic next week we cannot wait to hear from you until then don't forget to thumbs up subscribe comment and tell your friends bye bye